Hello, my name is Mohammad Aminazadeh. This presentation is on our research about city intersection clustering based on time series data. First, I will talk about data source. Data used in our research is collected from Traffic Department of Isfahan Mun Municipality. Overall, uh, there are 71 intersections across the city. Uh, traffic sensors are implanted um, beneath those intersections. Uh, we pinpointed each intersection on the map to get an overall view about the distribution of intersections. This figure shows that intersections um, are well distributed, uh, which means that traffic values are not um, from certain areas of the city and it will show uh, general traffic condition of Isfahan. Uh, traffic data received from Traffic Department of Isfahan Municipality uh, consisted traffic values from October 2018 to November uh, 2021. Uh, we received uh, 37 text files that each one of them was related to a single month from 2018 uh, to 2021. Uh, each of those text files uh, had around uh, 350,000 lines of values, which in total uh, resulted in around 13 million lines of traffic values in text format. Uh, so we are facing a big data problem. Uh, an important question to answer is, what do we aim uh, to find out? Uh, we have grouped our research questions into two categories. First, we seek to find answer to three quest uh, questions related to time series visualization, uh, which are uh, number one, how does traffic flow change in 24 hours of the day concerning each season of the year? Uh, the second question is, what are the traffic flow trends in 24 hours of the day concerning each uh, day of the week? And uh, lastly, at which hours of the day do peaks and valleys happen uh, in traffic valley? Uh, the second category encloses a single question related to intersection clustering. Uh, that is about finding out intersections that have similar traffic flow behaviors. Uh, we passed the analysis process through five different phases. In phase one, we cleaned the data and uh, separated each intersection's records into different text files, uh, such that each text file only contained values of a single intersection from 2018 uh, to 2021. Uh, in data cleaning task, we removed incomplete, inaccurate, uh, duplicate, and inconsistent data uh, from all text files. Uh, in phase two, we handled missing values and approximated those values using statistical and logical methods. Uh, these two phases, phase one and two, are the pre-processing tasks that we did on data. Next. We aggregate traffic values and time in phase three. We did traffic aggregation by averaging available traffic values. Uh, this method handles uh, aggregation of the mix of missing values that we were not able to fill and known traffic values, which is uh, apparently impossible, but um, by averaging uh, only available values, uh, this problem is uh, completely handled. Uh, time aggregation or zooming out changed the interval between each two records from 15 minutes to one day. Uh, next two phases directly lead to our results. Uh, in phase four we visualize the uh, time series uh, of 24 hours of the day for each intersection. Uh, for each hour of the day traffic values of that day are average. Um, so in 24 hours, uh, 24 average values are 
uh, plotted that uh, leads to uh, our time series. Uh, finally, in phase five, we clustered the intersections time series and figured out similar time series and uh, similar time series and consequently similar intersections. Uh, I will talk about the details of this phase in next slides. Uh, we compared our study to related studies uh, and we divided those studies into two major groups. One is studies related to traffic data visualization and pattern recognition, which aim to visualize traffic flow in 2D or 3D spaces and measure some factors to categorize traffic congestion levels. The second group uh, focused on prediction. Uh, we did, uh, what we did was uh, relatively uh, new to related works, which is considered traffic time series clustering and pattern extraction. Um, we have uh, we see hourly time series of intersection number um, 1002 uh, with respect to quarters of the year. As you can see, minimum traffic flow or valley has happened in 4 a.m. after uh, a drop after a midnight drop. After that, traffic goes through a period called morning rush, which uh, rises significantly and can continue to rise until 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, that reaches uh, the peak. After that, it drops and another rise follows it, which is called the evening rush. Uh, after 6 p.m., traffic usually drops and falls uh, until it uh, reaches the valley again, and this um, loop uh, repeats over and over again. Uh, this is another figure of another intersection which had slightly different behavior. Uh, the afternoon drop and the evening rush are not uh, as noticeable as in the former figure. Uh, an interesting thing here is that afternoon drop uh, is more steep in summer and uh, spring, which may be due to noon temperature. This intersection shows almost no afternoon drop here, as we can see uh, in traffic volume. Uh, the maximum or peak in traffic volume is occurred after the evening rush at period between uh, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, another point here is that night, uh, night drops uh, at fall and winter are um, happening sooner and uh, steeper than spring and summer. It may be due to cold weather or other factors. Uh, besides the quarterly time series, we decided to observe time series of different days of the week to find different differences in uh, traffic flow between those days. The most noticeable difference was between holiday, which is Friday, and other weekdays. The morning rush has much more gentle slope, as you can see, uh, on Friday than on weekdays. Uh, on the other side, the evening rush on Friday happens uh, with more intensity in comparison to other days. Uh, now let's discuss the process of intersection clustering. Uh, the first step uh, is to find the best algorithm that fits our problem. Uh, we choose Euclidean k-means um, between those algorithms, uh, but DTW k-means, which, uh, which stands for uh, dynamic time warping k-means, uh, was also an option, but we decided to avoid it because some time series uh, happened at different times are also put in the same cluster in DTW k-means, which uh, we wanted the similarity of intersections uh, to happen simultaneously. Uh, the second step uh, is to find the optimum k, which is the best number of clusters. I will discuss it uh, in the next slide in more details. Uh, step three is to visualize those clusters to find hidden patterns and finally we will analyze the results and try to find out uh, how and why intersections are clustered that way. 
Um, to find the best number of clusters, we decided to choose the elbow method because it's both simple and accurate. This method uh, tries to minimize WCSS, which stands for within cluster sum of squares. Uh, this uh, that plays um, as a role of a cost function. Uh, this, me this method clusters intersections in different iterations. Uh, at the first iteration, k is equal to 1 and uh, increases by 1 for the next iteration. Uh, for each iteration, WCSS is calculated. Uh, then WCSS with respect to to k is plotted and the k resulting the elbow of the graph is the best number of clusters. Uh, here we can see that um, we reached k equal to 5 uh, in our study as the um, uh, best number of clusters. Um, after showing each cluster uh, with unique color on map uh, we can observe that a cluster one intersections which are green on the map uh, are spread um, on a straight line from north to south of the city thus they are used mostly for north south transportation uh, cluster two and four intersections with colors black and yellow on the map are mostly on the borders of the city so they are mostly uh, uh, the connections uh, to other cities and are used for out-of-city transportation. We figured out that cluster three intersections are the main business and entertainment centers. And uh, finally, cluster five intersections are mostly adjacent to the river, as we can see the purple ones. Uh, so they are usually used for riverside transportations. Uh, now the most important question is that how do we uh, uses information to uh, help enhance traffic management. The answer to that question is we can behave each cluster differently based on its functionality. For example, to reduce corona infections um, by uh, applying uh, limitation policies. Uh, these policies work best on cluster 3, which is the uh, main centers of the city that are most crowded. If these limitations uh, were done on cluster 4, uh, it influences city imports and exports that are done through these intersections, which leads to uh, massive economic and time loss for the city. Uh, this is our references and Thank you for paying attention.